All right, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the event safety briefing for the Max Adventure Race on the Sunshine Coast this coming weekend. Really looking forward to be able to put on the event for you and looking forward to seeing you out there having a great time. Uh, before we get started, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians upon whose land we will be meeting and pay my respects to their elders past, present and emerging. Uh, firstly, if you haven't already, I would encourage all teams signed up for the event to have a good read of the event program. It has a lot of information regarding the event and should answer just about all questions you have, you might have about the event, all right? So that's available on the website and on the latest news section, but was also emailed to all registered teams and will also be attached to the email that this video is attached to. So plenty of opportunities to jump in, have a read of that event program. It will really help make the day go more smoothly for you. Uh, most importantly for you classic and novice teams, it will explain where the bike drop is. So before you come to the event center to register, head to the bike drop and you leave your bike and all the equipment that will go with you out on the bike, like your bike helmet. Uh, leave that there with the, uh, with the marshals on the bike racks provided, and then you come round to registration. Uh, if you're part of the kids course team, no need to do that. Bring your bikes along with yourselves straight along the registration and we can get you out on course quick smart. So when you arrive at uh, the car park at the bottom of our Wild Horse Mountain, please follow the direction of the parking marshals. They'll let you know where to park. The car park is likely to fill up and we'll be parking cars along the side of the road. So just take care at that time. There might be other cars moving around, other teams moving around. So park where directed, just be patient while we get everyone in and we'll be away in no time. So once you've parked, head along to registration. Uh, at registration, just let us know your team number and we'll give you your team bag, which will have your race map, your course description, welcome letter, timing chip, a wristband to attach the timing chip, uh, some safe uh, and your race bibs. Okay. When you are planning your course, a lot of teams look at the map without looking at the course description. Good tip is to look at both the course description and the map together in conjunction. They help you determine what you're going to be doing out on course, what you're going to be looking for. Read the course description carefully. It generally says that controls must be collected in the order that they're listed on the course description. If that's not the case, which it is for one part of uh, the course this weekend, that will be clearly listed there as well, okay? So course description can be just as important and, as the map, so make sure you read them together. Uh, when you are out on course, you'll be given a timing chip. Uh, that's what you punch at the controls out on course to accord that you visited that control. If you haven't used one before, speak to us at registration. We'll be able to grab your timing chip and show you how it works. Generally, you stick it in the hole in the control, the control beeps and flashes. If you see a beep but not flash, or you see it flash but not beep, that's all good, you've got it, you just need to see one of those things. So make sure whenever you visit a control, you punch that control, because that records that you've been there. There's also controls, this is a thing that uh, newer teams especially can make the mistake of, at the transition areas. So a transition area is when you're moving from bike to kayak or kayak to a one leg or run to a bike leg, whatever the case may be. All right, make sure you punch the controls at the transition areas. If you then go out, say on the kayaks, you've punched when you have arrived, you've gone out kayaking, you come back to the same location, punch it again, okay? You need to make sure that whenever you visit it after doing something else, that you get the control. We don't want to be having to give penalties for missing controls at transition areas. That's never nice to do. This point is especially important for the bike drop TA. You'll see when you get your map that both teams on the classic and the novice course, don't worry about the kids course, but the classic and the novice course will visit that bike drop location a number of times, up to four times on some courses, okay? So whenever you get there, punch it, punch it, punch it. If in doubt, punch it again, okay? Uh, an important rule in adventure racing is the 100 meter rule. The 100 meter rule means that the teammates must be within 100 meters of each other. That is very important in terms of safety. So once you get outside of that, it's very easy to become separated. And there's one map, suddenly there can be someone out on the course that doesn't know where they are without a map and no way of knowing how to get back onto the course or exit the course entirely, okay? So stay 
within 100 meters. I say 100 meters, really it should be 10 meters. The best teams stay close together, they work together, they help each other navigate, all those sort of things. So the best bet is to stay close together. You're always communicating with your teammate, letting you know how each other were going. That really helps you out on course. So remember the 100 meter rule. Uh, as I mentioned about safety, the 100 meter rule is also important for safety. If you do get in out in difficulty, out on course, the first point of call is gonna be your teammate. They're gonna help you, you know, if you've had a fall on the bike or anything like that, teammate's gonna be there to assist you. If you do need further assistance, capture the next team that's coming along the course, send them further along the course to notify uh, a staff member at the next transition area, then we'll be able to, you know, they'll be able to radio in, communicate with us at the, uh, at the start, first aid there, we can get the first aid out to you or someone else can come out to you and help uh, get you off the course if needs be. Uh, if you do stop to help another team that's had an injury, anything like that, you stop, they've had a bit of a crash and they're a bit, uh, a bit shaken up, you stop for five minutes to settle them down, get them moving again, come and see me at the end. More than happy to give you a time credit for the time you spend doing those sort of things. Uh, one very important safety thing for this event is that the roads are not closed, okay? All roads in the state forest where we're gonna be operating are open and they can be quite popular with four-wheel drivers and trail bikers on weekends, okay? So stick to the left when you can, ride in single file, keep an ear out for them as well as an eye. You'll often hear them coming before you see them coming. Give them plenty of space. They have as much right to be out on the course as you guys do. So uh, give them plenty of space. They're having a good time doing what they like to do. You're having a good time doing what you like to do. Now I talked about the, uh, the trails out on course. Uh, the first thing to note is that a lot of them are quite wet. There's been a lot of rain this year, as we all know, and that has left some large puddles in different areas. On this course, there's always been some sections that have had some large mud puddles. There's probably more than there generally is, okay? Don't go plunging blindly on your bike or on foot into a large mud puddle. Screw it around if you can. Some of them are really quite deep. Uh, so you are gonna get wet feet. There's no point trying to avoid it. It's gonna end up happening. Embrace it, splash through the paddles, especially when you're on the bike. They just add to the fun. So I spoke about the trails there. Some of them can be quite wet, quite muddy. They can also be a variety of standards. So they're all marked on your map where the trails are on the course. They range from very wide, smooth fire trails down to, unless you know what you're looking for, doesn't even look like a trail was ever there. Heavily overgrown with lantana, thick grass, all those sort of things, okay? Where trails have totally disappeared and there's no real sign of them at all, we have removed them from the map. Otherwise, the trails that are marked on your map are there, they just can be very hard to spot. Now, a really good tip for this location, and I say this to everyone when we do this event, look for the trees with the blue band around them. They are there painted to indicate where the actual trails are. So if you see two trees with blue bands, in between that is a trail. And you might look at it and go, that doesn't look like a trail at all. And it might not be, it might not have been used for a while. That is indicated on the map though, because those blue bands are a very useful navigating feature. Another useful navigating feature for you all, if you have a look at your map, you'll see that areas of vegetation change. White represents you know, old growth pine forest. Uh, the yellow and the orange represent newer areas of uh, pine growth or areas that have been recently cleared, while the green areas are native vegetation. So you'll see that some checkpoints are even located on the join of the native vegetation with the pine forest. They are clear when you are at that location, so keep an eye out for that when navigating to those checkpoints. Uh, so as I said, some trails are very heavily overgrown. They virtually don't look like they're there at all. The trails that lead to the checkpoints, not necessarily the most obvious one, but there is always a trail that goes to where the checkpoint is located, is in a good condition where it's easy enough to follow even on foot or on bike, okay? So if you're planning to approach a checkpoint from the east, you ride towards it and you get to a trail, there's the blue band of trees, but it's absolutely covered with lantana, and a couple of hundred meters around the corner, there's a trail that approaches it from the north. Maybe use the track from the north, because you'll likely find that it's in a lot better state 
than the one you originally looked at. We put all the checkpoints in. We didn't go uh, bashing through uh, kilometers of Lantana to get to them. So there's always a way, a relatively easy way to get to the checkpoints. It's gotta be a bit of a challenge though for you. When you're on the mountain bikes, please ride to your ability. Okay, we all have different levels of ability. So please ride to your ability. Do not be afraid to get off and walk in sections if you need to. This is especially true on the last section back to the event center after you collect the last checkpoint when you're in the back side of Wild Horse Mountain. That can be quite rocky and quite eroded. Please get off and walk where needed. You won't be the only team doing so. But doing that means you continue moving forward and don't end up doing something that you shouldn't be doing and ending up injured, okay? Ride to your ability, get off and walk if needed. Uh, for the kayaking leg, okay? The kayaks are quite heavy, they're around 30 kilos, so it is a two-person lift. There was around 25 meters that you need to carry the kayaks from the kayak trailer to the water's edge, okay? If your team will struggle with that, and I understand there's gonna be some younger team members, especially out on the novice course, that they might struggle to lift that. Don't have your teammate try to lift the kayak by themselves. Source assistance either from the staff members that are there or from another team that's in the location at the same time. We're all here to help each other. Helping a team carry a kayak 25 meters is not a great impost, and that means everyone's out there having a good time. When you get into the kayak, your feet are gonna get wet. They're gonna get muddy, okay? Can't be avoided, they're probably gonna be wet and muddy from earlier in the course anyway, but they will get wet and muddy getting into and out of the kayaks. Leave your shoes on. You're gonna have wet feet anyway. Leave your shoes on. There could be oysters in the on the entrance point there, and if you've ever seen someone cut their foot on an oyster, you do not want to join them. So make sure you have your shoes on when getting into and out, and when you're on the kayak. So really shoes on at all times. When you finish the kayak leg, carry the kayak from the water back to the kayak trailer. As I said, needs be, grab assistance from a staff member or a friendly nearby team. I think that's about everything for that I need to cover off. Uh, I'll be available at the event center in the morning. There'll be some other of our, the staff members, the Max Adventure staff members as well, out on course, both at the event center, the bike drop and the kayak location. If you've got any questions, come up and ask. Uh, if you are a novice team, Make sure that you come along to the novice uh, navigational tips and tricks session that I'll hold in person uh, just after registration closes for the novice team. So have a look at the event program for the timing for that. That'll really help you uh, know what to do out on course. If you're a classic team, afraid you don't get that uh, you don't get that assistance. If you are new and you are looking at the classic course, remember to work together. Think about what you're doing. Focus hard on the map. Don't blindly follow the team in front. That's the number one tip for, uh, for classic teams if you're doing the event for the first time and aren't too strong on the navigational side of things. But follow closely the map, work together, you'll have a great time and you'll come back, maybe a bit muddy, but smiling and having completed the Max Adventure Race. See you on Saturday. Thank you.